Terry, I'm so glad to be a part of this discussion about brain health. To me, brain health is emotional well-being. The two are so tied together. Um, I've been teaching a workshop called the Creative Core Workshop, which is a self-care workshop that I created for actors, playwrights, directors, artists, um, and anyone who has any desire to improve uh, the way in which they take care of themselves. Uh, I took it upon myself um, in my 20s, in my 30s, probably even more so, um, to figure out the best way to take care of myself. Um, I was an artist, an actor, and, it, you know, the thing I want to begin with, Lee Strasberg quotes this French actor from the 18th century, I want to make sure I say his name right, Francois Joseph Talma, who says that in order to be an artist, one must have unusual sensitivity. I think that's true for all the art forms. And what happens is, uh, and I'll speak from the actor's point of view, from my own experience definitely, and from what I've observed, because I also teach uh, acting and, and coach, um, most of us feel that there's something wrong with us because we are so sensitive, or so we've been told <laughs> uh, that we're feeling too much, we're expressing too much, especially growing up as kids, and not really feeling that we uh, that there's something right about us, not not wrong about us. And so I think as artists, we really have to learn how to embrace that unusual sensitivity. Um, and I think a lot of us still carry around in our heads, in our brain, what we were told as kids, that it was too much. You're too much. <laughs> and uh, we, we bought into it. Somehow, though, we still knew in our heart and soul that we needed to be artists. So I teach this workshop, and I really feel that just as we tra train for an art form, we have to train the brain in order to um, take better care of ourselves. It's, it's a training process. And a lot of what I do in my workshops that I've learned to do for myself reminders, basically, of some very basic things. Um, and then, of, of course, I go into a little more detailed visualization techniques, etc. But, but some of the basic ways I start my workshop is inspirational quotes. You know, what can we put into the brain um, that reflects a positive outlook, something that is it, that would inspire us instead of working with a brain that's really always very critical and judgmental. And we've also learned that from early childhood teachers. Um, and so it's up to us, how can I retrain my brain to support me in my endeavors? And I think we do need a positive uh, thrust for all that we do in, in order to really go to the depths and use the authenticity that we long to use. But I do some basic things. Inspirational quotes. A gratitude list. What are you grateful for? Five things. And try to try to grow those five things every day. If you can, start your morning with that. Because we tend to wake up and, oh God, what do I have to do today? And this and that. And oh, and I messed up yesterday. And instead of, you know what? I've got a bunch of things I, I'm kind of grateful for. And so we want to keep that fresh in our mind. I also teach affirmations. Um, what are those tiger thoughts that kind of uh, pull you down and pull you back? And what's a good affirmation to counteract that tiger thought? I also um, am a big teacher of mantras and or power phrases. And basically a mantra or a power phrase is using a, a short phrase that either has a, a deity in it, a spiritual concept to it, or mother nature. 
something that we feel is bigger than us that we can lean into because I think a lot of artists feel that they're all alone and it's a, a lonely journey for them and I found with a mantra um, that I, I, I've trained myself over the years that no, there's something bigger than me and I can lean into that and ask for help and support uh, through that way. Um, some of the other things I've, I work with um, uh, in my workshop, um, I have people choose words. I write out um, incredible qualities like um, optimism, like authenticity, like simplicity, and have each person work with that word and what does that word mean to you and how is it important for you as a human being as well as an artist. And that also begins to reshift the way in which we, we look at things. Uh, I'm a big believer in breathing <laughs> since I am an actor and of course for our work, relaxation is everything in order to be able to do the work. And if you aren't breathing, you aren't feeling. And of course, um, our work is, is all about ways in which to retrieve feelings, um, behavior that we think is appropriate uh, for the play, for the character that we're taking on. Just as I would imagine for any artist, the importance of being relaxed and in one's body and the breath really helps. But one of the things I've been learning from the Buddhist tradition is that through three deep breaths, and this is something that Pema Chodron teaches, and I love her. She feels that with three deep breaths, we can often get into that monkey mind, that chatter mind, that, that mind that's kind of taken over, that we often feel we don't have control over, but we can learn to control, um, that we can slip in there with three deep breaths. And that's, I think, because we're totally focusing on the breathing and we're totally focusing on our breath and how the breath goes into our body and back out of our body. So we're taking our attention off of that thought and we're putting our attention on the body and in this case, breathing. And when we can really begin to let go and really focus on the breath, we've taken our minds off of that troubling thought form. Very often the monkey mind will go into a spiral uh, decline, and we have to really watch that and find ways to move out of that. Another huge way is through grounding. Um, I'm always working with my students about grounding themselves because we can get very heady with our art form, with our uh, feelings, etc. And grounding is key. And basically, I just teach, get your feet on the floor, grow big roots, like big tap roots through the bottom of your feet, through however many floors you're you're in whatever building you're in, or if you're outside, even better, tap roots right into Mother Earth or through those floors into Mother Earth and see if you can really visualize and let those roots grow. And then tributary roots coming out of, out of those roots. And after a while, your feet like really feel like they're almost being pulled by Mother Earth. And it's, it's a great sensation. Um, and so that's another... Um, technique in terms of working with the mind, grounding oneself, so that we can begin to put in positive ideas about who we are and what we want to do. And I think that's basically what I want to say. I also, as I mentioned, do a lot of um, inspirational um, books as well. I recommend books. Um, certainly Pema Chodron, but, but a lot of authors that can really help us with self-care and ways in which to orient our thinking. I do a lot of visualization with um, bringing in the sunshine into the torso. We actors call this our instrument, 
and bringing the white light in there and cleansing and clearing so that the we we incorporate the brain uh, as part of our whole instrument and we absolutely need the brain in order to focus our attention to um, concentrate on what we need to concentrate on for our art form. Um, so these are just some of the ways uh, I, I've been working with myself and working with my students. And I just want to say that I have felt this work has become even more important during this pandemic. I know many, many of my students have felt so isolated uh, over the last couple of years. And even though they have been doing classes on Zoom, it's not the same thing, obviously, as being in uh, the same room with the other, with the teacher. Uh, and so I feel there's a lot of healing that needs to take place um, for them to really be able to do the work that they want to do. So I'm really glad that, uh, Terry, you are working on this idea of the importance of brain health for artists, um, absolutely necessary so that we can go as deep as we can and also then be able to come back out of it. I am not a believer of staying in that world, um, you know, forever, <laughs> for as long as you're working on the character. I say we go into that world and we also come out. And the very way that we go in as actors, you know, we also come out with positive visualization. Um, so I could get a lot more <laughs> detailed, but I, I think this is enough. So thank you for thinking of me. And I look forward to hearing everyone's ideas on this.